Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. We're doing five pieces of advice today for first year teachers, or what I would like to call them, facilitators of learning experiences. So if I could tell myself something 15 years ago, this is what I would be whispering into my own ear. Number one, for the vast majority of students, school sucks. School sucks, they don't want to be there. They don't like learning very much. They're, they're not into being chemists or biologists or historians. They're there because they have to be. So I always tell people uh, that I have to sell cars to kids that don't want to buy cars that don't have any money. And that means that your number one job is really getting their authentic attention, getting their energy to uh, you know flow in an engaging way towards what you want them to do. And that's a hard task to do. So remember to use everything in your disposal. Use your charm and your body language. Use the walls in your classroom. Splash them with colors and with, you know, a little bit of humor and cultural references and some academic knowledge and, um, you know, make them come alive. And don't be afraid to pipe a little music in when they come in. I think anytime you can get them to forget that they're in school, you have a better chance at getting that attention. Remember, if learning is a car ride, then their authentic attention is the, you know, the gas to that car. And you can't fake that. So make sure that you know your number one job is getting kids who don't want to buy cars to buy cars. School sucks. Number two, kids are people. You know, never forget that our job above all else, I think, is a human relationship job. It's how you communicate with other human beings. And, you know, I know the old adage that, you know, they can't be your friends, but you can be friendly with them. You want to form relationships where, you know, you have that ability to have an engaging um, experience with somebody. You know, I heard people say, well, I don't care if the kids like me. Well, you should. <laughs> how can you get somebody to, you know, venture on an experience with you that doesn't like you very much? That doesn't mean that you have to kiss butt or anything like that, but certainly interacting with other human beings and garnering their respect and telling jokes and caring and being empathetic about their lives is really, really important. So, you know, if you've never waitered, if you've never subbed, if you've never worked retail, maybe you shouldn't be a teacher because kids are people too. Pedagogy counts. It counts. You don't have to raise your teacher voice. We're in the midst of a lot of non-teachers kind of telling people how to teach. And I think that you have to have a really strong kind of theory about how learning occurs. And we're not going to go too far into that. But I would say is that learning doesn't occur between my mouth and your ear. That means that you can't tell teaching. That's why I really prefer that we're facilitators of learning experiences. That's your number one job. Get the kids to make something. Get them to make something that they want to make. Maybe it's a Facebook page, or maybe it's a movie, or maybe it's a podcast, or it's a poster, cartoon, comic book, whatever. And then you can layer your traditional literacies, all your rigor. Get all that rigor in there. You know, form a good rubric when they're making that project and have them read and research and write and collaborate and think out loud and reflect and re-edit and present and do all of the things that you do in a normal classroom, but have it all pumped towards this new expression of meaning. They're working towards that end endeavor where they're going to have ownership and identity and they're also going to be playing with your academic discourse, which is really important. You're going to facilitate it. That's the number one thing. You're the orchestrator, conductor. They're the orchestra, get them to play their music, beautiful music. Rule number four, don't be a dick, tater. And I know this goes against a lot of what you learn in your method methodology classes where they're telling you be very strict and have the rules visible and go over them, like to a degree, I guess. But if the emphasis of your classroom is on authoritarianism and getting everybody in rows and to sit straight and be quiet, I don't know if you're ever going to have a chance at a meaningful learning experiences. That stuff has to happen over time and respect. Be consistent, be fair, and keep your rules to a minimum. The more rules that you put on the board, the more you have to be a dick, tater. So keep it simple, but be light, be humorous, and uh, most times, I would say 95% of the times, you can diffuse conflict with smiles, humor, and uh, you know, changing the attention pattern. So don't go in there with a huge rule book ready to lay it down on the line there. So rule number four, don't be a dick, Tater. Rule number five, be alive, man. Be yourself, be authentic. 
Um, be full of life. I always say where attention goes, energy flows. The kids are going to read your energy. I know that's all new agey. But if you're cool and friendly and fun, they will be cool and funly, friendly and fun. They give back what you give out. I think at the end of the day, um, that's probably the biggest lesson that I can give you. They're going to be a reflection of who you are. I've always had people say, Ooh, watch out, first year, first year's going to kill you. Eh. I loved my first year. Just have fun, man. Go in there, you know, with your objectives and with creativity and innovation. But definitely, uh, you know, have a good time because this is your life. And like I said, it's going to play back at you. So if you have fun, there's more of a chance that they're going to be having fun. Giddy up for that, guys. I'm leaving you right now. So check out Hip Hughes History. We have like a zillion, maybe three zillion videos. You should check that out. And always remember where attention goes, energy flows. And uh, we'll see you next time.